Hey, my name is Verona Rose, and you guys are on the cookhouse at home. My name is Verona Rose. I'm a 20-year-old independent songwriter and producer based from Florida. I frequently travel when I can to California and back. And I'm just somebody who's heavily passionate about music and the unity that it creates. So if you're for that, let's join. I want you to join on this journey with me and let's go ahead and get right into it. Overthinking Funny Enough is uh, actually about how I overthink. <laughs> I wanted to make a song that would sonically describe and lyrically describe the chaos of my overthinking where it's laid back, instrumental, is very external, and the lyrics are just insanely chaotic. And so that's exactly how I overthink. I'm just constantly probably not really speaking that much, just vibing a lot, but in my head it's going a hundred thousand miles a minute and I can't really keep track of it half the time. And it was very hard to make a song about it. But um, that song to me means so much because for the first time I think in a very long time I was able to actually put my overthinking into a two minute, three minute song, which I never thought that I would be able to do. But I also wanted to hope that maybe someone might be able to also relate to that overthinking idea, mainly because I feel like I am not the only one who overthinks out there. And so that's kind of the big reason why I wrote that. And it was more so just to kind of describe how I really much overthought things. <laughs> I think one thing that definitely sets this apart from the music that I have out now is that there's a little more of an acoustic drive to it as opposed to some of the other stuff that I have currently out. So a lot of the stuff I've released before is a little more poppy, a little more synthy. And while that is my heart and home genre, I think this one definitely is driven a lot more with the piano. There's not too much going on instrumentally besides just stuff working together. And so it's definitely more driven with the piano and acoustic. And I love it that way because one of my bigger inspirations is Sarah Barry Alice. And so being able to just hit the notes that I was hitting in the way that I did made me feel not only like the coolest person on earth and that I would hope Sarah Barry Alice would, you know, look at it and smile, but more so that that would be the bigger distinction between what I have released now and this song specifically. So to try to pick a favorite part of this song is to try to make me choose what my favorite ice cream is, and that's already an impossible decision. So for me, there's so many different parts in the song that I love. In the beginning, there's this weird like, like person screaming, no it's not, which is actually one of my best friends, Hallie. And at one point, the song pauses before the second verse. So what actually happened while I was recording this was, I was actually watching this cat that I didn't know was gonna stay at my parents' house for a very long period of time, so sorry mom. And um, Orion was his name. And so while I was recording, I was trying to record the second verse for a couple hours and he hopped onto the desk. And right when I was about to record, he put his little paw on a specific button that actually muted. I don't know what he muted, but it still recorded and it muted the song right at the part where the song actually stops before that second verse. Cause the chorus is going on and then it stops right to explanations will unfold. That was my cat. He did that. So I'm not even gonna take any credit for that part. It's one of my favorite parts of the song, but that was legitimately 100% him. And I think one of my other favorite parts is just the idea where the piano actually came from. So this one is my favorite because I was skipping class, or I wasn't skipping class, I was, I, whatever, don't, don't, look away. I was maybe skipping class and I was in my college practice room and I was just trying to get this chord progression that you hear in the song over and over and over again. I was literally not able to get it done. It was just a nightmare because I kept playing it and it wasn't coming out the way that I wanted it to. It was either something maybe velocity wise wasn't there, rhythmically it wasn't there. I just don't know, I was getting so frustrated. So I had this voice memo that's probably about like four minutes long and it's just me just doing the same chord progression over and over and over and my frustration's growing. It's getting insane and too intense. So then I literally just lift my hands up from the piano and I'm like, Okay, 
I, I need to take a second, I need to breathe, I need to stop overthinking this. And I, you hear me take a breath in the actual voice memo, and then right from there, like I feel my posture loosen up, and then I just play it. I don't think about it, I don't think what's gonna happen, I just play it. And that specific loop right after I took that breath is the actual piano that is in the song. So it's right after I stopped overthinking every single little thing known to man, and that's what's actually looped as a part of the song. And so there's all those little parts in the song that just have all these little minute meanings that I put in a lot of my music that I love so deeply because I do put everything that I can just heart wise and head wise whatever I can into my music because that's how important it is to me and how big of a thing it is for me because it's definitely more of a need than a want and so being able to put everything that I am into something even down to the simplest detail that I didn't overthink this piano loop and that's what really embodied the song is just something that is so, I don't know, it's interesting to me and I love it deeply. And I think that's cool that I'm able to share that kind of stuff with you guys because that's the stuff that I love to talk about. So now you can just listen to it on loop and maybe give um, Santoku Media monetization for the uh, loops you might put on. So. <laughs> Worst part of the recording process. I feel like it's <laughs> it's the taking more than three months to finish a song for me. It's the uh, losing the vocal tracks and the original stems for me. It's actually losing twice for me. <laughs> Not by my choice. I know I'm a little bit of a reckless person and I leave things where I shouldn't and my keys get lost a little more than I'd like them to, but I did not have a cooperative computer at the time. And so sometimes I would look for files and they would just disappear. They Houdini'd me and it was not fun. And a lot of times I had to restart it. And I, when I thought I had something so good, poof, it was gone. <laughs> so I kind of took it more as a sign to like draw stuff back. And I took it more of a sign to just kind of like not overthink it because everything known to me and it felt like was just trying to tell me to stop overdoing it and overthinking it. That didn't stop me still, but it was a good shot, good try. But I think that was the worst part because there were so many times where I probably wouldn't have had a computer because I would have tried to punch it, but my little ramen noodle arms probably wouldn't have helped that out. So <laughs> that's not my favorite part. <laughs> I think one of my favorite parts of actually recording overthinking is the moments where I did just take a second to literally stop and intentionally take breaks. So that way I was able to come back in and not overthink everything after getting a little frustrated because as much as I don't want to admit it, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to getting my stuff down. And so I'll sit on stuff for so long, even though it takes time to make things, but I'll sit on stuff for way longer than they need to. My uh, exported songs folder is a nightmare. Don't don't ever look at my unfinished projects because it's just like a list and list and list and list. But I think just being able to actually have those moments where I was thinking about what I was writing and sometimes it would collapse in on me, but other times I'd be like, oh, I'm overthinking it. How funny, how ironic. But then I was able to just do the kind of same thing that I did from my piano college room moment where I just like fixed my posture took a breath and I just let go and did it. And I think I want to feel that all of the time. Of course, I'm not gonna might not be able to stop my overthinking, but if I could just remember to take a second to just breathe like I've been doing in those moments where I was recording, then um, I think I'll be a little bit okay. And so that's the part that I think I appreciated a lot. I think the, the cat paw pause part though is also like a really good runner up. So that one actually probably is icing on the cake. So maybe that one takes a trophy, but who knows? Why would you ask me this? <laughs> for sure Gibson, because my Les Paul is my baby, but I can't deny a good fender. But for this one, it's gotta be Gibson. We love a Gibby. Ooh. Once again, this is a tear. Ah! Uh... <laughs> I think I gotta give it to Big Time Rush. I love Jonas Brothers, I'm sorry, but I'm still young and I gotta live. And if I'm gonna live, I'm gonna live at Big Time, so. Uh, 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 oh. 
100% phone. I sometimes can't stand text. I love the easy nature of it and it's a lot easier for me sometimes, but I love hearing people's voices. I love being on the phone and I love being able to kind of feel the vibe and the mood because sometimes text can be easily misread. So phone 100%. I think right now I have never been like a big fan of Taylor Swift until recently. So my inner child would be answering Hannah Montana because um, the only person who will understand this reference is my cousin. We had a thing back in the day where there is a unknown tape that no one will ever find of a concert. And um, Julie, if you're watching this, I have the copy and Hannah Montana and Lily, um, we live to see another day. I think for that alone, I'm gonna pick Hannah Montana for my inner child. If I had to pick for me right now, it would potentially be Taylor Swift, but I feel like I know a little more Hannah. Oh, sorry, sorry. What do you call Taylor Swift fans? T-Swift? I call her T-Swizzle, so <laughs> I don't really have a <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Man, you know what? The only reason I say Nickelodeon is um, you guys should go to Victorious and check out the episode in season one called Tori the Zombie because you may or may not see a little girl when she opens the door with face makeup on and that little girl may or may not be me and that little girl may still be receiving revenue checks till this day because of that episode. So maybe you should go check it out. Tori the Zombie, Victorious, Netflix. My answer Nickelodeon. You, you should you should go watch it if you want. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching me diddle around and just kind of say a lot of fun things. I really appreciate you guys coming over here. If you guys want, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It would be underscore Verona Rose underscore. And definitely keep an eye out because 2021 has a couple interesting surprises up these potential sleeves. And so go ahead and follow me on those platforms. Uh, new music potentially coming soon. A lot of fun, exciting things. And I'm just excited to be sharing all of that with y'all. So with that being said, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated with more really sick artists and hear a little bit more about what they're doing and their heart behind their music. Hope you guys have a great day. Go tell your mom that you love them. And that would be my one ask. All right, y'all. Bye.